proceedings so far? Well, my general observation is that there is a chasm, there is a gap between what litigants or petitioners and their lawyers uh, need the public to believe regarding the substance uh, and content of their petition and their grants and what actually play out in court. And that's why it's usually better for the viewing public or the general public to wait on court proceedings. Uh, court proceedings may be full of legalities and all the technical verbages that are used, uh, but and therefore a layman may not uh, have a thorough understanding of all the bends and turns and all that. But if uh, the public is patient enough to watch the proceedings, to follow the proceedings carefully, they may have, at the end of the day, and the final analysis, a fair idea about how it will all end. For example, just one aspect. Whereas, um, when the petition was lodged, a lot of people were talking about uh, the need to, including senior lawyers, perhaps in a partisan manner, talking about the need to conduct the proceedings uh, more or less in a summary fashion and ensure that a decision was rendered before inauguration and that that could be done. We've done it in other jurisdictions. We get to court. And those who are challenging the result of the election, the outcome, are taking adjournments, are talking about sickness, they're talking about processes uh, not being uh, exhaustively concluded. They are talking about the liturgy uh, of INEC and that INEC was not cooperating with them to bring all these things and all that. And look, these couldn't have been done in you know, that summary fashion that many people thought was possible. So you have a situation whereby before proceedings open, the judex is set up. Judges are you know, portrayed as people who want to trade on justice, who want the thing to be dilatory and be prolonged. And hey, you get to the proceedings and then discover that it's a different ballgame altogether. So we need to be patient with that system and then get the best we could get out of it. There are a lot of emotions attached and invested in the proceedings of the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal. And predictably, some people have already started to express the view that you know, we might not get justice from the tribunal. What would you say to people who express views like this? What I see on this occasion is that a lot of people who are not familiar with uh, our legal history, with our political history, with our jurisprudence, are making comments and giving opinions on things they are not very sufficiently knowledgeable about. And so the judiciary is set up. Uh, the judiciary is portrayed as an institution that can never give justice, which is not the situation even in our uh, uh, current situation. Many of the governors in this country, Obi himself inclusive, became governors by the grace of the tribunal. And he will tell you that he has confidence, you know. Mimiko, uh, Oshio Omole, Aregbe Shola, a number of them like that. Okay? So if it could happen for the gubernatorial, why is anybody thinking that it can never happen for the presidential? If the evidence that is produced is sufficient to warrant the tribunal returning a verdict that the election uh, was not properly conducted and therefore the person that has been declared had not been uh, elected by a majority of lawful vote cast in that election. So why do they so think? So I am saying that the forecast of failure is either because their preparation was not sufficient or because they knew that they would not you know, be able to get the success the thing that they should get or the wish uh, to get. So you have to work hard for it. And look, in the 2007 election petition, the Yarabdoa petition, at the Court of Appeal, 
sitting as the tribunal, the presidential tribunal, the election was partially nullified. It was. It was partially nullified. It was when the matter got to the Supreme Court that you then had uh, a situation, you know, uh, like that, in which there was also a dissenting opinion, even at the Supreme Court, while the Kitobi and others, and people were shocked that the Kitobi could do that at that time, you know, and all that. It was a split decision, both at the Court of Appeal and in the Supreme Court. That 2007, whatever. So, if we got that close, why is anybody thinking that if justice requires that it be done, that the Judex will fear that the heaven will fall on them if they ever do justice. I know it's a tough call because by our precedents, by our authorities, if you are alleging corruption, if you are alleging uh, malpractice in the election, you will have to prove it polling boot by polling boot. That is the standard that has been laid in our jurisprudence. And it is difficult in a presidential context to be proving, you know, uh, corruption, to be proving uh, malpractice, to be proving all that, you know, polling boot by polling boot. It's difficult all over the country. I know it's difficult. If you are to be allowed or given time to do that, maybe you won't be able to get through with that in a year. So it is better to have a clean election so that we don't even have recourse to the judiciary. Because we are now getting to a stage when some people are saying that I won't recognize anybody that is declared until the court says so. The court is not a certification buru to certify results because it is possible that contestants will accept the results of election, the outcome, without going to court. It's possible. And when people are suggesting that the election should be viewed live, should be televised live, I opposed it even before they started the fireworks at the tribunal. Because I had written something about it in 2007. And I wrote it in the context of what happened there in 2007. The article was titled, should, uh, Is it legal to televise uh, an election tribunal proceedings? You know, and I said, no. One, the rules of court are not so provided. Practice direction have also provided. Three, public hearing is guaranteed by our law, meaning that members of the public can bear. Four, it is covered by journalists who, judicial correspondents, who can faithfully and copiously report what transpired in court. So why do you need television camera to place it? Now, look at the other side. When you do that, in the age of social media, in the age of uh, all the uh, broadcast uh, stations being meshed to the internet, which promote, encourage immediacy of feedbacks, including people writing on the thing as the things being shown live or YouTube or streamlining and all that. This goes on. The judges have their phones. They go home after one day proceedings because it's not going to be a one day affair and they start reading what people are talking about them they start getting influenced so you are already interfering in the proceedings of the tribunal mind you there is no sequestration here in the united states of america where you have a jury system jury members are put in one place they don't have access to television they don't have access to phone you know they are guarded by the judge only and then they apply the facts it happened recently with the case of uh, 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 Trump. Okay? So those judges are not uh, secluded. They are not, you know, taken away from society. And so you want them to uh, be entertaining Nigerians on television and for Nigerians to be, you know, just immediately after they are saying that, or as they are saying that, to be reaching them back. You are a fool. You know, is that what you should be saying? And all that. What kind of judges are these and all that? They are human beings. They are feeling. You are already interfering with them. With what they are doing. And so for me, that will not guarantee one inch more. Transparency, accountability, and integrity of the system. 
So I, I said there's no need for it. Let's round off talking about agenda setting for the new administration. I know that in the twilight days of the President Muhammad Buhari administration, he signed off on the law improving the welfare of the judges. But what more do you think that this administration can do to improve the lot of the judiciary? I will start from where the former president let off. Yes, he signed something on welfare. So is it being implemented now? So it will still take the executive you know, to push and ensure that it is implemented. For example, it may help you to realize that judges are usually on the same scale. Yes, a judge that was appointed 20 years ago on the bench receives the same salary as a judge that is appointed today. I don't find that funny. The judges may not tell you this. So there are no scales. Up till now. Oh, oh yes. So these are, <laughs> it's funny, but because judges do not, they are not, they, they can't by their profession, they are constrained. They can form a union, and then it, I wish they could form a union. Okay? Although it will be said that that will lower the majesty of the judiciary and all that. But these are the issues. Uh, for me, we will still need to refederalize the judiciary. Uh, judiciary, in a way, as it is the case in the United States. Every state in the United States has its own Supreme Court. They have their own district court. They have their own state court of appeal. People don't know this. While you have the Central Court, the Supreme Court of the United States, there, serving federal courses and exceptional cases that may flow from the state which are challenging infraction of the Constitution. Those are the only cases that may flow to the Supreme Court of the United States. Otherwise, murder, all those cases, these are state crimes. So we need to refederalize the judiciary. Uh, we also need to do law reform as a handmaiden of justice delivery. Okay, 